AK. So in the last class, um, we started, um, we were rounding up on building the endless runner for Android. I don't know if we started doing that yet. Okay. Um, I think we need to let's jump into it. All right. <clears throat> so this is where we left off in the last class. Okay. So I think I have been able to set up one or two new things. The um in the last class I informed us on where to get the um, asset packs. So you can search up, go to the Unity Asset Store and look for the Retro Sound Effects Pack. And then also get the um, free casual music pack. Okay, so the free casual music pack has these really nice So these you can you can use either of these ones. So if I go to my main scene, okay, so I'm just going to show you how it's set up, my menu scene. Alright, so I have this and then I have the background music. And then this background music has this um, tropical game loop. So one way to do that is you can just right click on the hierarchy, create, let's just say VG music, all right, like that. And then come to your um, components on the inspector and add an audio source okay so an audio source and then you see the slot for audio clip then drag and drop navigate to the audio you want to use in this case we're using the tropical game sound and then drag and drop it into the um, audio clip so we want this to play continuously all throughout the period will be in the menu so just make sure it's set to loop okay this is already what I did for the previous um, previous game object. So this game object is what will handle the audio that will be playing within the um, game. So just make sure you reset it so that it's centered in the uh, scene. All right. So you can just copy this. Make sure you save, and then navigate to the um, game scene. And basically just do the same thing paste okay but in this case we need to change the audio all right so this time we're using a different audio we're using this all right so use you can you know if you want to use the same one you can just use the same one but like when you paste just make sure you change this by you know switching the audio clip so that that would be the new audio clip if it's too loud for you you can change the audio and the volume of the audio source but we already have one here so we don't need the other one all right so make sure you save now let's see what the game looks like from start to finish from the main scene to the current game scene <clears throat> So we can see already have a high score of 3240. 3240. So the high score keeps updating. Okay. So if you want to control the sound, you can always use this um, sound icon here at the side of your um, game scene.
boss. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I I wanted to ask. This. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. I wanted to ask why. What's um what's always made the game to slow down and skip like that? To slow down and what? Like what's slowing down the game? Sometimes when you play it and the game starts, it starts skipping, slow down and all that. Like that smooth transition, you know, the, is there any cost for that? Um, I'm not sure if it's the network on your end because it's not doing that on my end. Probably it's the oh oh. Um, so lag. it means it's the network from my end. Okay. Probably it's the lag. I also couldn't hear the background okay. sound. Oh, okay. Um. Okay. Okay. Is it Okay, yeah. Um, you can actually reduce the size of the particles that would be spawning in the game to kind of control the um, control how it covers up the scene for you. So depending on how you see the game. Okay, we can't hear the background sound. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I can. Let's see. It's playing now. Can you hear it? I'm not. I'm, <laughs> I'm not losing anything. I think it's a uh, network uh, light issue. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, because it's not moving yet. Oh wow! All right. It's not moving yet at all. Like I'm still seeing the screen. The screen is just uh, the game over screen. So. Okay. Well. All right. Um. Okay. Well, the could you hear me when I was playing the audio if, um, at the start, like when I was going through the song? Ah. Uh. Well, I didn't hear I didn't hear the audio, but I was just thinking it's the network or something. I don't know. So, um, all right. I thought I would, I would I would be able to hear it when you play the game, all but right. I, I didn't well, either. I think it's not taking in the game's audio. Well, anyways, let's let's just uh, move on with this. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. Another thing, if you go back to the game scene and go to the spawner, I added a few new um, scripts and a few new components to the script. So we're just going to quickly um, breeze through and we will see how that is working. So I added a time between spawn and then minimum time between spawn okay so these two are like near so let's just stay here okay so what is happening is we want to kind of give a sense of difficulty increasing right if you notice the gameplay you would see that there is there was a time where it started getting a bit hard to um, evade the game object. Okay, so originally we only had this. Okay, we only had this and this. Okay, but now to kind of like increase the difficulty just a tad bit, we included or I included this new, um, this new part. So what we're doing with this is we are checking if the um, start time between spawn is greater than the minimum spawn time. Okay, so this minimum spawn time is the smallest time that you need between every time you spawn a new obstacle. Okay, so when you spawn a new obstacle, this is this is the time to keep checking for. Okay, and then we also added 
um, the change in spawn time. Okay, so this change in spawn time um, allows us to control how we decrease how we decrease the time between spawn. So let's say we started off the game with two seconds between each spawn time. Okay, so when you spawn a game object, you wait two seconds before it spawns again. And then you wait two seconds before it spawns again, and then continues doing that throughout the course of the game. But it just gives, it allows it to be too constant, and then there is no like difficulty, there's no increase in difficulty. So what we're doing now is every time we spawn a new game object, let's reduce the start time between spawn. Okay, so by doing that, anytime we spawn, we check is the time spawn, um, time, start time between spawn less than is it greater than the minimum time we need so the minimum time is okay when it gets to this point don't change the start time between this point just leave it constant and then the player will try to evade okay so if it is less than if it's greater than that means it's still within a very good range reduce the change in spawn time okay so this start time would reduce by this factor which is the change in spawn time so let's say the first time it spawned after two seconds the next time we're going to reduce the two seconds by this value so whatever value we change whatever value we do this with it changes with this okay so this is what we will be changing every time we spawn so let's say the first time it's two let's say our change in spawn time is like um, 0 0.1 so the first time it will be 2 the second time it will be um, 1.9 the next time it will be 1.8 1.7 1.6 1.5 1.4 1.5 1 all the way to whenever we set our minimum spawn time so if our minimum spawn time is 0 0.5 immediately it gets to 0 0.5 it won't change again okay it maintains 0 0.5 all until the player loses so that's how that works. Okay, so now um, I will, okay, let me just show you, let me show you how that is in the um, game scene. All right, so here we are in Unity, and this is, this is what it's, this is what is going on. So our start time between spawn is two. So while experimenting a little bit, I find, um, found out that the change between uh, the change in spawn time is best at 0 0.05 kind of gives it more control it was originally at 0 0.1 but 0 0.1 was too fast so this kind of worked out well and then the minimum um spawn time is at what point is this still playable yet it's fast okay so that worked very well with um 0 0.6 at 0 0.6 so that's what that is um that's what that's going on there. Another thing that I added is the um, lifetime. So the obstacles have a lifetime now, and um, okay, no, sorry, um, the um, heat effect. So when you hit the obstacle, it spawns a heat effect before it gets destroyed. Okay, so you 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 would notice if I play the game, if I play the game and I hit something. It gives this effect of being hit by an obstacle. So you can do whatever effect. So if I, so you see there's a kind of like flash when you hit an obstacle, like a black flash, bow, and then you die. Okay, so not a very good record there. So if I replay this and I hit an obstacle, so it's, it works the same way when you hit a coin, like when you get a coin, it just gives a kind of splash and then you know hits and then everything stops you can if you have a death animation you can just play your death animation here by just doing something like um you know animator.death so we have the player you can just do the player dot set trigger and then you know do death okay Oh, okay, yeah, sorry, player dot animator. Okay, I need an 
any of the animator components. Either you do this or probably just, you know, recreate the, you can just get the animator component directly. Animator, there's a difference between animation and animator. So we can just say animator, other component that get animator. You can get the animator here, animator, all right? And then just set the animator, you know, set trigger death. So this way you play a death animation easily and then the player can die instead of just standing still, you know, you can just play. But we don't have a death animation, so we're just going to go back here. So just in case you need to add the animation, uh, a death animation, that's a good way to go about it. Okay, so we do if you have a heat effect. Okay, so if this heat effect is in the scene or you um, slotted in a heat effect, instantiate that heat effect within that transformed opposition with no rotation. So quaternion dot identity means no rotation. Okay, so the rotation is just going to be the default rotation at zero zero zero. Okay, or whatever. Yeah, so that's zero zero zero. So these are the additions I made to the game. There is nothing else that is new. Okay. So yeah, so everything is the same. Okay, this obstacle. Everything is the same from here. Okay, spawner, spawn point. So everything is the same. So if we go to the coin, you see that it's the same instantiate. So instantiate the effects on the transformed opposition with no rotation. Okay, so that's that for the game. Okay, so now um, let's quickly let me quickly show you how to set up and build for Android. I'm sure um, some of you haven't built yet. So the best way you can um, set up is just quickly um, go to your um, player settings. Okay, so open your build settings. So you can just go to file, build settings, make sure you're on Android, and then switch. Okay, if you're not on Android, make sure you switch to Android. And then on the bottom left corner, you'll see player settings. You can easily either see it here or go to edit, project settings, and then it takes you to the same. So you can just do it here. You know, it comes to the same. So navigate to player. You might be on something else, but go to player. Set up. Usually this is on something like a default company. It's usually like this, but uh, you can change the name. So I'm using the, since we're, you know, building for the African XR community, you know, just create this and then endless runner version let's say this is your fifth version you can just say version 5.01823 something or whatever so we're using zero version zero from 1.0 since this is our first build and then we can put in you know the icon that you have for your apps so you can select an icon so what i did was i took a screenshot a screen grab of the main scene okay went to the main scene menu scene okay let's close this off for now and then i made sure this was plain all right so just a kind of shortcut to how i did this okay so i made sure this was plain then held shift um shift uh, windows shift s so that will bring in your uh, bring out your clipping tool and then you can you know, time it correctly and just clip. Okay, so you can clip this, and then you have this. So you can save the image wherever you want to save and just say, uh, let's say, endless runner icon. Okay, so it saves, come out, stop there. Okay, and then um, you can just drag 
So go to where is, you have it saved, drag, drop it into Unity, just like that. And then when you have this, you can you know, just put it in. That becomes your game icon. Okay. So when you build and you install it on your um, your Android device or whatever, since we're building for Android to be your Android device, you would see this as the icon for the game. So on your app list, it will be the icon for the game. Okay. So, um, okay, let's wait for Unity to update its DLL. So let's quickly, when this is done, we'll quickly go through the Android build settings and uh, we'll jump into XR. Just want to give us a brief introduction to how XR works and then um, deploying to Android using XR with a very simple, um, interesting project. Okay, that was taking a bit. going on all right sometimes unity just checks itself for so okay you can set up different icons depending on the size but i don't really think this is necessary at some point i've not had the need for it so but what you want to do is go to resolution and presentation Make sure this is set to full screen window. Um, hide navigation bar. And um, yeah, optimize frame pacing. So these are just um, optimization and resolution checks that you need to do. So um, we don't need it in landscape, okay? We only need it in portraits. So just switch these off or come here and just make it portraits. And then it all makes, it goes straight to portraits. Leave everything as is. Make sure it's at native aspect ratio. And um, yeah, go to the splash screen. If you have an icon or like a logo for your project that you want to add, just make it, you know, all sequential and then add. And if you want the logo, you can just do the same thing. Go to your project, navigate to where your logo is, and then just drag in the um, logo there. So you can just you know select the logo. Where is it? And why is it not letting me? Oh, okay. So make sure it's a sprite. Okay. So single. And so this only takes in the sprite, not an image. So always make sure it's a sprite. Okay. And make sure it's a single. And then apply. All right. So you can now drag and drop it in. So Immediately your game loads up, it will load up with this icon. But this icon is not really good for uh, what we need, so we're not going to use this. Okay, just going to close that off. Okay, so that is awesome. So yeah, um, if we preview this, we would be able to see what this looks like. So preview again, made the Unity, and then game loads up. So if we had that other one, let's drag this in and preview this. It's a do you made the Unity, show the icon before the game starts. So you know, but I don't I don't think we need this. So we can just do all of that. Um okay I think this is well good. Other settings, yeah. So um for other settings, let's make sure all of these are properly. So you don't want to use linear for Android. Okay, make sure it's on. Yeah, auto graphics API. So just, I think all of these are good as they are right now. The only thing you need to do is maybe change the version here. Or I can just do, just change the version. So the package name is going to be the company name and then the name of the game, all right? So that's what your Android device will use to recognize the um, 
package or the project or the game itself. Okay, so all of these settings are kind of like tiring, but you have to go through them to make sure that it works properly. So the minimum API level, you can set it to the minimum or you can just like put a limit. Maybe you want it to run from Android 7 all the way, you know, just to tell, um, you know, you've noticed on Google Play Store, sometimes where you want to download the game and then they're like, this game is not compatible for your um, Android version or whatever. So you can set an Android version you want your game to run on. So if you want to be like really crazy about it, let's say you've gone through the um, optimization and cost and you're like, you know what, let's just start from Android 9, you know, and everyone else can you know, figure themselves out. But this is a very simple game, so Android 5 makes sense. And then if this is at IELTS, so make sure it's at this. So yeah, I think these are the only two major um, things you need. And if you're using this, make sure to check ARM64, okay? Do make sure to check that, okay? Um, they are needed for um, launching to Play Store. Play Store will require you to have a 32 bit and a 62 bit architecture for the game. Okay, some games run faster on different platforms, on different phones, okay, depending on their build um, features. So, yeah, those are the major things you would need, okay, at least for the testing phase and deployment for Android. All right, so you can close that off, go to your build settings, and then build. Okay, name the game. I already built once, so make sure I had to reset everything to show you guys. So just make sure it's saved. Yeah, so it's build the game out in a Jiffy. So by the time it builds the game out, I'm going to move it to my phone and then uh, share my screen so that you guys see um, see what it's like um, on the phone. Okay, let me just do that now. I already have it on my, um, so I'm just, I already have it on my phone. So I'm just going to share this with us. Okay. So, yeah, so this is, you can just navigate to your um, file manager, look for where the project is on your phone. It usually you just drag it into the, um, so it's endless runner. Okay. I think I deleted the APK. All right, so just make sure to have it on and then install, install it and then run the game on your mobile phone. Okay, so same thing, maybe Unity. And then it will load up the game. So this is what the game looks like. Everything works as it's supposed to, and uh, yeah, it makes so much sense. So that is what it looks like. Okay.
All right, so hopefully, well, let's do the explanation with that. But it got, it got to that part last year. So eventually. And they're, and they're just releasing their 5G router. <laughs> These guys, they bought big time. Okay. They just got license. Like at first, you know, you have to apply for license. And the government gave MTN and the MAFAB communication. They were the first to get the 5G license ahead of a, it's more like a competition. The highest bid I get. So even Glue is still not in the race. So grandmasters of data is whenever the government gives them glow, license. Glow is, glow is, glow is always. Can we hear me? Grandmaster glow is of the eighth uh, comma. <laughs> it's good. Daniel is back, so we um, sorry. We continue. Off, because I did not know. Uh, it's close to thirty minutes. Seriously. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. Oh, can yeah. I just say something? Hey, don't tell me you didn't, you didn't, you didn't know. No, I did not know. Wow. wow. Oh my God. Wow. It's interesting. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we had Busola join and she was out. Like, you must have said a lot. <laughs> <laughs> a lot more. Uh, a lot more. Be that, is, that is a long time. Well, um, <clears throat> so what I just God. did, when I stopped... In the, in the way they cook self, don't do it. Rice, way they cook self, don't do it. You get. Uh, so I just, um, you know, you can... What I did was create the build, okay, for Android. I will send the, I'll send a short video to the group so that you guys can see how to do it before the full video comes out. Because that was quite a while then. I did not notice it go up. Okay, so um, I already moved the build to my phone. I'm trying to get the Can we all see my screen? Yeah, we can. Okay. So, I do let me know if you guys are still connected. Okay. I guess we're still out. All right. So, um, I should be able to cast my screen now. Okay, so this is the screencast. Hold on, let me paste that. Just making sure I'm still connected because sometimes this whole thing is quite funny. All right, so I'm going to cast my screen now and um, share what the game looks like on the mobile device. Okay, so this. All right, so this is my app list, and then we have the game here. All right, so this is the game. We've built, we've set it up for Android, and then we've built. So let's open the game and uh, see what it looks like. So made with Unity. Then, yeah, so this is our game.
Oh, okay. I was just saying it's a free show. So it takes a while to actually build out when you you know done a bit of change in the settings. So for all in all, after you build, you can you know install it on your mobile device and run it from there. Um, to get the full gist of everything I did for the setup, I will send a part of it to the group early, cut it and send it to the drive. Or I just send it to a drive and then send it to the group so that you guys can build out before this video um, eventually comes out. Because sometimes I think um, we've already gone through the whole network issues that we've been having in the country. So that kind of disrupts things for us. Okay, so that is basically it. That is like basics of. Um, let me say um, Android game development. So once you've put in all your logic, set up all your scenes, done whatever it is, although I, I did not cover the entirety of Unity's programming functionalities and the physics engine, and, you know how to work with like vectors to a certain point. But um, when it comes down to it, these are the basics of um, game development using unity okay so if you're really interested in you know going more into c sharp programming um, in-depth game development i can suggest like after the course i can suggest uh, courses on udemy maybe um, playlists that are about 40 hours on youtube you know, just to have a broader, um, a broader understanding of game dev functionalities and stuff. So we want to go into interactive game development. I think this is still going to take a bit. So. Have we deployed our project on GitHub? Um, okay, not yet. All right, you have a question, or oh, this is your question. It's not on GitHub yet. The separate it's... question. Okay. Separate question. Yeah. Okay. The question that I would like to ask is, um, as far as as far as the as far as the deployment is is concerned, um. And the um, consistent learning that you said after the classes, that's the further learning, the 40 hours video kind of a thing. I have one of a, a pressing issue. Which one is better to learn, at least for an, an, um, a beginner? There's what I can see from online mm -hmm. tutorials is there's kind of like there's a C sharp for Unity specifically. I'm not saying that there's a, a type, but there's like a kind of C sharp. Um, for Unity, if you if you are looking forward to building um, things on Uni applications on Unity, okay. then there's a normal C sharp maybe with .NET and um, any other, any other framework that you are using yeah. to build like maybe web applications or just like the core um, knowledge about C sharp without having any form of Unity inside it. Yeah. So um, um, I would like to ask which one is much more better to start with in terms of getting the fundamental knowledge? Is it the C sharp maybe like the C sharp vanilla? Let me put it that way. 
or the normal C um, or the C sharp with Unity integrated inside of it? Um, well, the thing is, okay, you know how we started off with C sharp basics, okay, before we moved to Unity C sharp. How I or how most of us um, learned is we actually started off learning C sharp with Unity, okay. But it got to some point where we needed to do more mathematics and more logic that Unity C sharp, like how we learned um, C sharp with Unity, could not cover. Okay, like how to think like a programmer, how to work with algorithms, how to you know understand data, how to you know use like state machines, how to do things like object oriented programming. You will not really get that doing following just Unity C sharp. You would actually have to go ahead and do C sharp basics, C sharp intermediary, and C sharp advanced courses. So the best thing I can advise is if you are going for if you want to go into game development in an advanced level, start off learning C sharp, understand C sharp itself. Understand the workings of C sharp, the logic, how you use .NET, okay? And I think Mosh has um, a very good C sharp course that you can go through. Like I took the um, I took the basics and the oh I know that guy Mosh. Yeah, Mosh. So you can take his course, okay? I got access. Uh -huh. I did a. That guy, that guy literally has course on every programming stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, very good. So you can check out Mosh and check out his um, C Sharp course. You can, at least for you, you can go through his basic C Sharp course and his intermediates. You don't have to do anything advanced because the advanced, um, the advanced, most people don't use the advanced for game dev. Okay, the advanced level for C Sharp you might not really need all of it for game dev, okay? Uh, you might just maybe since you, if you're having problems, you can just always go through um, a few things that would help with all of that. So, oh my days, ah. This thing always chooses the wrong times. What is going on? All right. I'm trying to get this. Um, sorry about that, guys. Um, the weather just got really, really bad, so it's affecting light and network right now. So they just took lights immediately, and now like everywhere is dark. <laughs> Um, okay, so I let's let's start with let's quickly start with XR development. At least let's try and set it up if the network will let us. So let's try to set up for XR. At least if we can do that today, then tomorrow, by God's grace, <laughs> the network favors us and it balances things out. But yeah, um immediately we um immediately we round up 
with this um, particular, um, maybe we round up with this, we would jump into it. So what I'm going to do is before we come back, I'll just show you how to set up, um, how to create a new XR project. So since you can see my screen, you can just go to the Unity Hub, okay? Go to Unity Hub, new project. All right, new project, select your version. I'm waiting for this to load so we can get the AR um, template. And then you can scroll, look for, yeah, the AR core. So if you want to build for AR, make sure you have the AR selected and then download the AR templates. Okay. So you can either do that, but if you have an already opened project, what well, we're going to this is to finish up this little clip right there. Let me just cancel this for now. Um, you already saw how the build was working, so um, I will let this run for a little bit. So okay, now we have the AR templates, and then you can just say intro to AR, intro to AR, yep. and it's slowing down all my processes, wow. So I think I will just close this up for now since when I Let's close that. Okay, I hate to do this, but I, I just have to do it. Mm -hmm. Slowing down my entire PC. <laughs> All right, so um, we can just create the new project. Make sure you're 2021, 2020. Okay. All right. So while that opens up, I'm just going to try to shut everything. Wow. That is eating up my CPU. Wow. Um, let's just close up. Let's just close this up. Oh, uh, sorry, boss. Yeah. This, this that you're having this um, this one I'm having this kind of issue. Say it will not, it will not affect my own system because my own system does not, is not really that um. Oh, much no, in size in terms no, of um, um, the RAM. Thing is, the thing is, I have a bunch of processes open, so what you need to do is make sure you have one closed before the other one opens. So I was trying to build out at the same time. I was running the Unity editor and then opening another Unity editor, okay. so like there were a lot of processes. Um, I was trying to make sure I covered up so that okay. we don't spend too much time. So. Um, always make sure to go to new projects, get the templates you need, download the templates. Since we're working with AR, download the, um, get the AR core templates and then create a new project. Okay, since I'm already doing that, by the time we come back, I would, the project would have been up and going. Okay, so let me, how many minutes do we have left? Okay, so this is the morning. Um, okay, it's already counting now. So I would we will start looking into XR um AR when we come back in. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, 
So let's see if this is loading. All right, so while we wait for this to build itself. Okay, I think that should cover up. Okay, um, all right, just to give us an understanding of what we'll be doing. Okay, so, all right, I'm just rejoining. And then we can get right on track. Right, uh, seems the network is going on and off. Um, while I wait for the, while I wait for the project to um, to import all the necessary things, I'm just going to take us through the setup. So, what we're doing, what we're going to start off with is we're going to do. Um, object tracking okay and in order to do that um, we're going to need a bunch of um, let me say a bunch of components so what we need to get is let's get an image let's get an image like a card we're going to track a card for this sample okay so let's do um king king of hearts okay and then say king of hearts card I think there is one, I don't know if it's a K drama now <laughs> called King of Hearts, but uh, yeah, so that we don't um, get the wrong thing. So, um, yeah, so let's get the card, yeah, this card. Okay, so this is card we want to get. So we can just save image as, so this is a transparent PNG. And then let's say King of Hearts and replace that. I already have this, so it's just the same thing. So it's just going to get that. Okay, someone joined. All right, welcome. All right, so besides this, we would also need um, a 3D game object, a 3D object. So you can go to Sketchfab. Um, it's just your mic is on. Can you post me? So I just said we should we can you know get a King of Hearts. Um, if you download a King of Hearts card or image, make sure it's you know, a transparent image, and then a 3D uh, model. So you can come to Sketchfab.com and search for King of Hearts. Okay, so you search for King of Hearts and then look for one of the free downloadable images. So I'm going to be using, let me see if I can find a usable one. Um, let's just get one of these. Let's just get this. So this one also has King of Hearts. Okay. So I already downloaded this. I wanted to change it, but yeah, let's just go with it. So you can just download the 3D model and make sure it's an FTX because you need to support FTX. So download this and then it's free. And uh, yeah, so go to your downloads. So we have the K Hearts and then King of Hearts zip. So unzip this. Um, 
okay king of hearts so we choose this and then go to sources why is this zipping zip and then extract this go in here and then this is what we need all of these are what we need so okay so i think the project is up okay so it's importing the last few um, dependencies and reloading the script assembly so while we wait for that okay so ar project template so okay so it's prompting us to set up the um, ar scene so we have to set it up so let's close this and quickly set it up before we set it up let's make sure that we have these so we need these and then downloads and we need this okay so we're going to be tracking this image and then we're going to be creating this game object with it so i'm going to show us how to track the game objects and then we would um, look at it but let's set the project up first okay so let's go straight down to business build settings player settings so since we are building for ar okay so we can see so this is intro to ar let's rename this as always so african xr community and then do the setup like i said before uh okay splash screen make sure it's windowed okay for android we're building for android not for um not building for pc so make sure it's for android so the only thing we go through is just the little bit tomorrow i'm we're going to actually build but for now i'm just going to make sure that the project is properly set up you know to beat the issues you yet to see the Unity screen. Wow. That would be a network issue because it's showing that I'm sharing the screen and I'm seeing the mirror when I come in. Uh, sorry about that. Um, can we also Everybody see? can't see the screen. Can you see the screen? Can nah, I can't. No it's idea. showing that you're presenting, but um, can you hear me? Okay, now. Can we see the screen now? Okay, a uh, screen. And not to what you're working on. Presentation. Mm. No. Okay, let me stop this. Okay. Somebody can. Someone can. Let me let me just restart. Uh the network issues we have in this country. Okay, um, so I'm presenting again. Hopefully, everyone should be able to see it now. Can we all see it now? If you can see the screen, please indicate from my end. I can't really see what you're working on, but I know you can see something. Okay, I think you can see where you are is really good, though. What not actually good? Because it's like <laughs> you have a much balanced um, network. So you can see Google Meet, but not my screen. Hmm. Can you see my cursor moving in Google Meet? Let's make sure that actually. I, is my cursor moving on Google Meet or it's just frozen? Yeah, I can see your cursor moving in Google Meet. Okay, so if I move away, I moved away from Google Meet now and I'm on, on immunity. How about now? Well, um, I, I think can really now see is when the problem comes in. Still on Google Meet, we can we can see unity. So, uh, what 
what what is happening now is that your cursor is placed on that uh, minimized um, icon. Okay. Yeah, that's actually where it's fixed on. Okay. Let, let me see. Share screen. Okay. Um, let's cancel that and try again. I think it's. I th I have the same issue. Like if I try to share my screen, it shows presenting, but the screen is not sharing. Ah. Hmm. Uh. Okay, so I don't know what is okay. okay. That's in your Google Meet. It's still on Google Meet, and it's not showing. Yeah. It's still not showing the. We are not seeing Unity. We are seeing your Google Meet. Wow. If anybody seeing something different, person you should indicate. So no one is seeing my only Google Meet. So everyone is seeing only Google Meet, even though I'm sharing my entire screen. Whew. Um, it's always we we call it a day. Yeah, I um, because I'm not sure what. And then so we. I would, I would just. I think. No, no. I would just record. Okay, I can just call this off. And then tomorrow we can pick it up from there. Yeah. How about the yes, um, we'll start Android that way. development? So let's start AR from tomorrow, I guess. So that tomorrow and then um, next week we will be in um, AR. So that we never, okay, we're done with Android. Let's start doing AR. Sorry about the whole inconvenience. It's, Basically the same for everyone right now. So, sorry about that. Um, yeah. Um, do have an amazing evening, guys. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow. I guess it's. It, I guess it's. I guess it's part of the national problem we are yeah, dealing exactly. with. Yeah. So. so. So, uh, thank you, thank you for today. Yeah, you so we hope tomorrow it is it is better. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. The network, um, the weather kind of disrupted the network. I think it's not so kind of messed up. All right. Um. Yeah. Um. All right. Maybe tomorrow we can come out earlier. Yeah. yeah. Maybe so that we can cover up more. Probably instead of four, maybe three. Okay, okay, because of church, I, I would have suggested to uh, before people get back to church. And, uh, How about that? Well, let's see. Tomorrow should work. Let's just discuss it.